with you for another Bible lesson. Today our lesson is called Not Your Donuts. <laughs> and we'll get into that in just a moment. But I wanted to welcome you and also remind you to subscribe and um, make sure you're getting notifications for our Columbia Kids YouTube channel. Also, we've got our Columbia Kids Facebook and Instagram pages, which are great tools for your parents or guardians to have um, to keep up to date with what we're doing in Columbia Kids and also to see our videos that um, we are posting on YouTube as well. So let's go ahead and pray and get started. Lord Jesus, thank you for today. Thank you that you are Lord of our lives, and um, thank you for teaching us about the Ten Commandments. I pray that we would put these into action in our lives and that we would remember them, Lord. Amen. Okay, guys, so uh, last week we talked about sprinkled donuts, and we learned the Sixth Commandment, which was, uh, pardon me, was do not murder. And we talked also more about that and how in Matthew... Um, Jesus said to not hurt others with our words or our actions. So um, it's not only do not murder, which is hurting people with our actions, but also um, hurting others with our words. So that was the sixth commandment, and we did this, right? Um, so this is like the other person, and this is us coming and being not very nice, and we don't want to do that, right? Um, today we're going to learn the seventh commandment. So we're getting closer to the, learning all ten. So I wanted to ask you, what's the worst kind of donut you can imagine? What would be the worst kind of donut to find on your table at breakfast? So if you're allergic to peanuts, which there's quite a few people out there nowadays that are allergic to peanuts, um, and a chocolate frosted donut there you come to the table and there's a frost chocolate frosted donut with chopped peanuts and you're like oh and you know you're allergic to it right that would be a pretty bad donut for you wouldn't it some of you may be pretty disappointed if you ended up with um, a donut covered in coconut I don't think my husband would like it a coconut covered donut um, but let's get a little creative for a moment a moment and imagine even worse donuts that could be out there what if you opened a donut box to find a donut covered in onions Ooh. or a donut with vanilla cream on top and then covered with broccoli Ooh. <laughs> A chocolate donut with some sauerkraut inside instead of cream or custard. Uh, I can, we can, uh, I mean, I can only imagine one thing worse than a sauerkraut filled chocolate donut. No donut at all. <gasps> no donut? Imagine that mom or dad or your guardian one of your guardians went to the store and they promised to bring back a box of donuts. But when that box gets to your house or inside the house, you open it up and all of the yummy donuts were already eaten by the person who said they were gonna bring them home. Someone you trusted to bring the donuts home. So many, uh, many people see the Seventh Commandment as a command only for married people. You shall not commit adultery is what it says. It's an instruction for married people. It is, really. But God wants husbands to be loyal to their wives. But I mean, God wants husbands to be loyal to their wives, and he wants wives to be loyal to their husbands. That's basically what that one means. But just like last week, we learned there was a little more to the um, to the sixth commandment, do not murder. We're going to learn today there is a little more to the seventh commandment as well. God wants all of us to be loyal and trustworthy. Even if you're not married, you we need to be loyal and trustworthy. That's something that God calls us to be. He wants us to people who he wants us to be people who keep our word to friends and family. 
So let's go ahead and open up our Bibles to um, Numbers 30, and it's verse 1 and 2. Numbers is in the Old Testament, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers. 30, chapter 30. And verse 1 and 2, it says this. Moses said to the heads of the tribes of Israel, This is what the Lord commands. When a man makes a vow or a promise to the Lord or takes an oath to obligate himself by a pledge, he must not break his word but must do everything he said. And that's all we're going to read right there. So Moses comes right to the point, straight out, straight out of the gate. <laughs> When you say you're going to do something, do it. When you make a promise, keep it. When you give your word, follow through. That's also what this, this seventh commandment means. Um, God's commandment tells us do not commit adultery, but it also tells us to be faithful and loyal to people we love. God doesn't want us to want to see us letting down our parents or guardians, our siblings, our friends. He wants us to people who do he wants us to be people who do what we say we'll do. He wants us to pr be promise keepers who do what we say, just as God does for us. So, believe it or not, keeping your word is an easy way to set yourself apart in in this world we live in today. Uh, many people are not very good at keeping promises and doing what they say they're going to. And because of that, most people expect others to break their promises. That's kind of a bummer. When we keep our promises and fulfill our vows, which are like promises we make to others, we can surprise people, but soon they'll see that keeping our word is part of being a Christian, and they'll understand that you're someone who keeps your word. You... You, if you say you're going to do something, you're going to follow through and you're actually going to do it. Um, just as God keeps his promises and does everything he said he would do or says he will do. If, you can keep, if we can keep our promises, we can be a great witness for Jesus. It shows people that we're a little different. We are trustworthy. It shows others that God's people believe in honor and that we can be trusted with big and little things. It goes without saying, this kind of honor is another way to show love to people. Um, whether for our parents, our guardians, our friends, our teachers, or anyone else, keeping our word is a way to love others. It shows we're good, for example, a good son or daughter or a friend. It shows that we're responsible and we care about things, the things we do and the people we do it for. Um, so don't skip over the, the seventh commandment just because you're kids, okay? Um, and like I said earlier, it's usually meant for adults. Um, because this is a command to people to honor. Uh, it's, it's a command, God's command to be people who honor our word for everyone. And it's for everyone, not just adults who are married. If you start now as kids keeping promises and fulfilling vows, you will continue to do so as an adult. Um, and it'll make you a better Christian. And yes, it might make you a better husband or wife someday, too. When you give your word, keep it. When you make a promise, keep it. When you say you'll be somewhere, be there. Start now to develop a habit of being loyal and trustworthy. A habit that will serve you well and help you keep the seventh commandment. Now, um, I want to review our memory verse, but let's review our um, commandments that we've learned so far. The first commandment is um, no other gods besides God. I'm going to pull out my cheat sheet just in case I forget. You guys are really good at remembering, but I, I need this just in case I forget. The hand motions really help me to remember, too. Um, no other gods besides God. Number two, no idols. Worship only God. Remember we put our fingers down like this, like bowing down to idols. And we don't want to do that. The third one, honor the Lord's name. Don't take the Lord's name in vain. Think 
Whenever you use God's name, think about it, respect it. The fourth one, um, keep a Sabbath day, rest and worship God. Um, our fifth one, o obey your parents or guardians. Sixth one, um, do not murder and be careful about your words and um, your actions towards others. And our seventh one today is we're going to have our hand up like this, and then we're going to go like this, um, like for adultery. Okay, so a hand like this and like this. It's just different. It helps us remember it if it's a different kind of sign. Um, and to keep promises, too. It kind of, I don't know, maybe this reminds you to keep promises. I don't know. But, uh, yeah. So do not commit adultery or basically keep your promises um, to others and to God. Okay, well, our memory verse is found in Joshua 1.8. It's still that one. Um, and it says, never stop reading this book of the law. Day and night you must think about it and what it says. Make sure you do everything written in it. Ten things will go well with, then things will go well with you. Not ten things will go well with you. <laughs> and you will have great success. Again, that's found in Joshua 1.8. Let's pray together, okay? Lord, we just uh, ask that you would help us to keep our word with everyone. If we make a promise or say we're going to do something, Lord, I pray that we would follow through and be trustworthy and loyal. Lord, and that people would see that we are different because we keep our word. Thank you for what you're teaching us about the Ten Commandments and help us to remember them. In your name we pray, amen. All right, guys. Well, that's it for our lesson today. Um, and next week it'll be lesson nine, and we are going to be learning about the Eighth Commandment. So um, I hope to see you next week.